season. Woo! Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. The World of Warcraft Classic release is approaching oh. fast, and okay. everyone is scrambling to figure out what they want to do. Yep. What class will I play? What Warrior. server? What server type? How many PvP. diapers do I need to buy? Shit In this my video, I wanted to make a guide of sorts and build a checklist on how to prepare for the launch of Classic World of Warcraft, okay. and also just give you some tips in general. So let's get the obvious stuff out of the way first, starting with the class. While I won't go into each class one by one, the main thing I'll say is that the classes in Classic are very niche. It's not like the current game, where if you have a tank spec, you're just as capable as tanking as everyone else. For example, paladins, druids, and even shamans are capable of tanking, but war- I love how shamans can tank in vanilla WoW. I think they should make that in the game nowadays. See, look at this right here. This is the actual tank. This is, you know, the shamans had enough time. Paladins had his little fun. Druid off tanked one mob. Feels like he's a god. Now this big dick motherfucker comes in and shows him how it's done. Warriors are seen as, quote, the best tanks in Classic. Yep. And as a result, most serious raiding guilds will focus their recruiting on warriors. You're goddamn right. For healers, priests are seen as right. the, quote, best. And as for DPS, Retribution Paladins will have trouble keeping up. It's the early days of MMOs where all of this stuff is still being worked out. For healers, priests are seen as the quote best. And as for DPS, Retribution Paladins will have trouble keeping up. And as for DPS, Retribution Paladins will have trouble Fuck keeping up. Fuck this video! Turn it off! It's the early days of MMOs. No, turn it off, man. And as for turn DPS, it off. Retribution turn Paladins it off. will have trouble hey. keeping up. Hey, hey, turn, turn it off! Yes, of MMOs, turn it off! All of this stuff is still- Look, dude, I mean, it's- I mean, you can still heal, man. But you can heal? I don't want to heal. I don't want to. I want to do damage. I do big dick damage. In retail right now, I do I do more DPS than most people. I want to do big dick damage on classic too. Well, I, I I should have the right. Okay. I should have the right to do big dick DPS in classic. I should have that right. That's true. I mean, you pay your fifteen dollars a month, and they should allow you to do as much damage as possible. And if they don't do that, they're basically stealing your money. Like that. That's actually a very good point. I agree with that being worked out Thank there you. really wasn't a standard so okay. as a result the balance is questionable in a lot of places okay. i am a believer that this time around due to our increased knowledge and skill things will be a bit easier and yeah i would say so will be more lax. everybody would say so i mean people five manned anixia back in 2005 yep. and that was pre-aq40 so i'm pretty sure you can afford to have a retribution paladin or two in the raid yeah but still in regards I guess to so. rating class balance or the lack thereof is definitely something to consider okay you can still find a guild that has a dps druid it's just going to be harder than just a bad guild to a combat rogue so you got to stay realistic as well as you can see here okay. i've listed each class and their viability as i remember it this is a super fast and loose description and it really doesn't do the classes justice in my opinion, one of the cool things with Classic is that these classes bring more than just raw DPS, heals, or mitigation to the table. They have their own and completely unique tools and buffs that still makes them valuable to any raiding guild. For example, Druids bring Innervate, which is crucial, and also they're the only ones who have a battle res back then. I think so that's a good point. pretty much every class has... Each class is niche. That's one thing that Classic WoW has that uh, BFA doesn't really have. It feels like every class kind of brings everything. The only real things, like what classes really bring something special. You have priests that bring mass dispel. You have uh, misweavers that do revival. I think revival, it's like a raid-wide dispel. Uh, warlocks obviously have summoning, and they also have the gates. Uh, rogues have shroud of concealment. Death Grip is a borderline. There are very few classes. Enhancement Shaman has totems. Yeah, nobody gives a shit about Enhancement Shamans, man. Sorry to say. Uh, but yeah, I, that's one of the things I really Even liked about Blizzard. class. Go ahead. Even Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> they're, the, they're the last people that care about them. Uh, it's dude, sad to say. Go ahead. Feels so bad for him, man. They, dude, Enhancement Shaman used to be like... It used the to be most like, oh. exciting gameplay. Oh, 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 yeah. It used to be amazing. Yeah, you're right. And then uh, I don't know what happened, but it's gone. Enjoying it as well. Thank you very much. 
and unique aspect to them. If you'd like a more in-depth preview and you have an hour to spare, I do have a full class pick a guide for you in the description. It's a tough choice for sure, and with how long it takes to level and the level boosts, it's oh, a super yeah. important decision as well. Okay. And the next question is always what rates to choose. Thank you, Similar Paul. story going on here with classes. Again, this is the age before hyperbalance. Yep. Certain races will 100% have an edge over other races, whether it be for PvE or PvP. And That's right, this is before hyperbalance, and now after hyperbalance. This is this is after hyperbalance here. When it's writ deck, it means that uh... That's after hyperbalance. We've actually gone down in classes. Now there's there's actually even now less classes. Where is it? Wait, which one is it? Oh there it is. It's another important thing to consider. My go-to example is always weapon specialization. Yep. Humans get increased skill to maces and swords More threat. back when you actually had weapon skill. And this reduced your glancing blow penalty. I never get glancing blows. It doesn't exist. That resulted from hitting enemies that were a higher level than you. It's super important for raiding, and it's one of the most important stats in the game, in fact. As a result, human rogues and warriors have an edge in terms of damage compared to... Oh man, I just... I, just a minute. I, I need to take a piss. I, I just want to... Look at that guy. That's going to be me right there, okay? Okay, back. All right, just one second. Uh, let me see here. Uh, you guys, my wife came in to tell me that she got tickets for our trip to our honeymoon. Turns out it was the 28th of August. I told that bitch to go by herself. Now she's not talking to me. Help. All right. Better solution. Get her into the game. I got my mom addicted to WoW. Instead of telling me to go to bed before my raid, She'd tell me to join my raid. There it is. That's all it takes. To other races. Get her into the game. And on the PvP side of things, orcs get that passive 25% resistance to stuns, which during classic is huge in PvP. Things were much more bursty back then, and you could really die in a single stun. That's so true. this is one of the best racials in the game for PvP. In the description, I'll have a link to every single race and their benefits. And again, if you want a more in-depth coverage, I do have dedicated videos for both the Horde and Alliance also in the description. And the next choice is the server, which can also be pretty tough. Well first, you have PvE versus PvP, which if you started after BFA will be new to you. It's pretty self-explanatory though. Okay. On PvE servers, you have to manually flag to engage in PvP with other players in most zones. And for PvP, everyone can attack each other at all times, with the exception of the starting zones. Due to the absence of flying in the game, the world PvP scene as a whole is much more active. You will run into skirmishes when yep. trying to complete quests, yep. or farming a high level spot, or just yep. traveling to a dungeon or raid. The Stranglethorn Vale zone in particular was always a bloodbath, and the Blackrock Mountain will be the stage for many PvP skirmishes. This is a good what you time. prefer is entirely up to your playstyle. Some love it, and some hate it, and just know that with no war mode, it's harder to avoid. Really, it's impossible if you take into consideration no flying, and not just that, but also- I do feel like, yeah, whenever you didn't have flying, you'd just be riding around and you just fucking see somebody, man. As one hasn't even played vanilla, what do you mean? I fucking, I started playing in vanilla, I got 60 in vanilla, what do you mean? Uh, like, th this whole thing, like, I never thought flying was, like, really, like, bad for world PvP, but I do think that, like- I think it was and it wasn't. Like, I guess, like, flying was kind of... It did lower the amount of world PP that would happen. But I think flying is, like, an overall net positive to the game. I guess that's kind of the way that I would look at it. I just wish that they had flying in, like, a better way than they do now. Uh, show pictures of you playing vanilla. Really? Like, you actually want a picture of me playing vanilla? Okay. Let me see if I can find one. There's one right there. You know who Hanky Panky right there is? That's Mick Reevy. He was up at his grandma's house on his HP computer. And I was down at my mom's house on my HP computer. 
and we cleared dead mines together by ourselves, two men. It was fucking beautiful. Beast Slayer enchant? Yeah, there it is right there. Let me see if I have another one. That's another one. That's uh, Zach right there on his mage. And uh, that's me right there on my paladin. I don't know when this was. I think this was actually during BC. But it was a little bit afterwards. There's one right there. There's Zach on the computer. Cameron eating my hot fries. Cody in the back. And myself recording him with my old video camera. This was in 2006. Yeah, we were fucking losers. There's me right there. Age 16. Playing well. The reason we took this picture is because it was the first time my room was ever clean. You know, hey, hey, it, it is what it is. Let me see if I have any other ones. Um, scrolling all the way down. I don't know. I don't know where all the rest of these are, but that's basically it. Okay. So there you see what I said. Uh, you started with Wrath the Lich King. No, I never lied. When did I say? I uh, actually, I want to know what this like. Black Mamba eighty six. When did I say that I started in Wrath of the Lich King? Like I, I'm, I'm really kind of confused about this because I don't remember ever saying that. Like, when did I ever say? When did I ever say that I started in Wrath of the Lich King? Like, w w what are you talking about? I'm just confused here. Okay, well, we'll see if he has anything to say. Uh, maybe he didn't mean it. It's just a troll. I don't know. Hopefully. Well, now he'll probably say that, but, you know, everybody knows what's going on here. Uh, Fox Slayer, thank you very much for the gifted subs. I appreciate that, man. Thank you, thank you. Uh, show achievements. Listen, dude, I've got everything. Um, show us your old magic videos. I've got my magic cards right over here, dude. Oh, shit. There it is. I've showed people this a million times on my stream. I stopped after a little bit after Ravnica. But, uh, yeah, here's my cards right here. This is, this is my rare binder. Like, I have a bunch of other binders for other cards, but this is only rares. So only rare cards right here. There it is. Uh, you're the best. I know. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, let's go with the rest of these. You got 58 in vanilla, not 60? Nope, I got 60 in vanilla. I did raids, and uh, I did a lot of PP. I mainly grinded the uh, the ladder a lot. I didn't have enough time to get Grand Marshal, and uh, I didn't have enough time to play a lot of the 60 in-game content, which is one of the big reasons why I want to play vanilla, is to finish it and to do all the rest of it. But uh, unfortunately, I never got really the opportunity to do it all back then because, you know, I had to, like, go to my parents' house or go to my dad's house because my parents were divorced, and I could never really meet raid times, unfortunately. Stuff like cross-realm grouping. The game as a whole today has many workarounds in avoiding PvP, whereas in Classic, your decision is made when you hit the character creation button. Yep. Another thing to take into consideration are streamers, which is also a point of contention. Hey. Streamers are of course a new thing that I'm gonna can ruin exist in the original game. run, and they're problematic to some I'm players, gonna ruin the whole a game. benefit to others, and to some insignificant. <laughs> Again, it's another preference sort of thing, and every streamer has to There it is, identity. dude! Some will have a negative impact on the game, and others a positive one. For example, a negative that some people see are the rabid communities that follow them. That's you and guys! And positive aspect are some of the events that they put on, such as the dueling tournaments. Hey! How about Personally, that? Personally, these days, I'm more in favor of how streamers about that? because I like the events. But I'm also a streamer myself, so I okay. guess not the most objective person to ask. Big true. There do exist videos on some of the reasons why people avoid streamer servers, yep. which you may find handy. I think this yep. one by Classic Winds covers most of it pretty well, and you Made can find sense. that in the description. There also exists a website called avoidstreamers.com that you may also find handy. Here you can find a full list of all of the bigger streamers and what impact- Why is Forzen very high? Why is Lyric very high? Like, Mizkiff is high? Oh my god. Very, very high. ...that they have on the game, so do what you will with all of that. So, you got okay. your race, your class, and okay. server picked. Yep. Now what? Well, now you need a name, of course. x killer like me, this is something you can spend hours on in the character creation screen, so it's best to think of that now. Start That's making good. a list of your top names in order, so you can get in there right away when the game launches. Yep. And this depends on when you're watching this video, but you can reserve your name two weeks prior to the launch. Do note, though, that you have to be subscribed, which may or may not be worth it to you. 
Boys are just can get also that little bit of extra money Luckily, out of you. Luckily, though, there do exist many websites out there that emulate the character creation options for Classic. Yep. A popular one is Wowhead. Mm -hmm. So that might be something that you want to mess with before release, especially if you want to. I'm gonna make my guy the exact same as you used to be. Waiting that first day for those name reservations. He's gonna be I'll the have exact that same. The description. And another tough decision will be your professions. Yep. It's pretty advantageous, I feel, to level your professions as you're leveling your character in the game. I'm not going to do that. Especially if you're gathering, so you should start thinking- I never did that. I, I, I just would level all the way to 60. I never cared about professions at all. I could buy this stuff later on. All I cared about was leveling. That's all I, That's all, all, the, all the way I've always been. Thinking about that now. For the launch of the game, I really like skinning because it's quick, easy, and it provides a generous amount of silver from just venturing, yep. which will be crucial in the very beginning. Skinning is really good for when making things money. things first kick off, the economy will be growing still, and you'll make the majority of your gold from these vendors rather yep. than the auction house. People can't spend any gold if they don't have it yet, so I'll be grabbing skinning myself and get some extra money into level 60, and then switch to my normal profession. And also, make sure that you don't neglect your secondary professions that everyone can train, and that's cooking, fishing, and first aid. As for what professions though, it's another tough decision. Just like with the races and classes, the professions are much more substantial in the game. One in particular that'll give you a tremendous edge over the others. Engineering is, is the engineering. only profession that matters. You have a variety of bombs and gadgets. It's that the are only super one that matters, period. Both PvE and PvP, and it's seen as the quote best because of that. Yes, it is. The other ones, is the for best. the most part, don't really have an effect on combat. No. Nope. They're just preference Not and really. synergy. For example, herbalism synergizes pretty well with rogues because they can gather fade leaf, which is needed for their blinding powder, and swift thistle, which they need for their thistle tea. You'll save a lot of gold if you're an herbalist rogue. Yeah. Again, I did also cover this very thoroughly. Not to just turn this video into a plug for my other videos, but it's such a- You go blacksmithing engineering if you're a warrior, period. Anybody that does anything different is an idiot. You can go enchanting, though, because that way you can disenchant gear that you farm. Anything besides that, engineering and blacksmithing or engineering and enchanting, that's it. If you go leatherworking, you're an idiot. If you go uh, mining, you're an idiot. Uh, there's no reason to deal with mining. You just buy this stuff. But here's the thing, right? Is you go in there, you're making so much money because you're just doing raids all the time. You're just fucking farming shit. You don't need to worry about b fucking mining, dude. What do you mean? That's for that's for clowns, man. Peons are miners. You're a fucking tank. You are the main tank for your guild. Get your guild to pay you money for simply existing. Broad subject, and if I okay. were to go over it here, that's all there we'd is be to here it. for an hour. So again, if you want more detail with that, I'll have another video for you in the description. Add-ons are another thing that you should sort out. In Classic, there are no quest markers, nor dungeon maps, and many of the other modern conveniences that the current game offers you. While I personally like it that way, and will be doing that stuff, it's you a better find game. the game to be That's annoying what without it. So it's check a better out your favorite add-on site, mine is CurseForge, and go through the add-ons and pick out the ones that you like, yep. and get those installed first thing. A popular one is Questy, which handles all of the questing waypoints, just like in the current game. So a lot of people like that one in particular. And expanding further on that, you can also mess with your system settings before the servers are up. There's a button off to the right, so set up your graphics and whatnot, and definitely go through that as well. And since we touched on it a bit, there are some things that you should keep in mind with a new server, especially if you're new to Classic. In Vanilla, you'll find that you need to train all of your abilities. You can only get them from class trainers, who can be found in the major cities and low-level questing hubs. And a big mistake that people will make is that they'll train everything. Depending on your professions, I'm not train you'll find that early I don't on, you'll it. be barely I don't like scraping it. along with gold. So it's wise to look at each skill and only train the best ones. For example, maybe you can forgo some of the hunter tracking in exchange for a new serpent sting. I, I'm still I'm still planning. A lot of people have been wondering about this. I am still planning on holding true to my uh, my agreement to not accept trades from anyone until I actually finish uh, getting my epic mount. Now, once I get my epic mount, I, I want to make sure this is clear. Once I get my epic mount, I'm going to be accepting trades like a fucking like a motherfucker, dude. I'm gonna be taking as much money as I possibly can. I'm not gonna care about 
about anything else. I'm just going to be begging on uh, begging for money constantly, begging for profession items, begging for consumables, never buying consumables. I, I need to repair. I beg for money in Stormwind. I take off my clothes and I put them in my, uh, my full inventory so I have to throw things away instead of vendoring them because I'm lazy. Then I beg for the gold that I could have gotten from vendoring the items that I threw away. It's going to be just disgusting, okay? But, but... I won't do any of that until I get my epic mount. Legitimately. Oh, whoa. That yeah. changes everything. Well, yeah, I'm not going to just sit around and farm a bunch of dumbass fucking bullshit. It's going to take forever. There's no way I'm going to do that. Like, I mean, I I, I don't want to have to. Like, I, I, it's, it's better for me. I'm just not going to do that. Fuck that, dude. What makes that any better? Because the rest of it is just upkeep time, and I don't really care about it. Uh, but I think the epic mount is really the only... It's, it's like the capstone for, like, getting uh, things in classic well. Or maybe the warrior's pummel ability isn't all that crucial to level up right away since it's just some extra damage. So just something to keep in mind. Super useful for saving up for your mount. So let's now here, here's the thing, right? Is like I, I would uh if you won't wait, yeah, I, I would never um use consumables for raids if I didn't have them given to me. I never would do it. Because it's a waste of my fucking money. We're gonna kill the raid anyway. The reason we're wiping is not because of a fucking consumable. Why would we ever- why would I waste my time with a fucking flask? Think about this. Back in the day, we used to have a, uh, you know, remember whenever you, that your raid leader would do a ready check, and then it would announce who has a flask and a food buff on? What I did in order to get around that is I would buy elixirs of lion's strength. Four strength. And I'd put them on whenever I was raiding in Burning Crusade. And also in Wrath of the Lich King after that. Just so I could fake the add-on, and the add-on wouldn't notice it. I would never spend the money on flasks. I never gave a fuck. And you know what? We never wiped because I didn't do enough DPS. We never did. Talk about that as well. Get your 60% speed mount at level 40, and your 100% speed at level 60. And of course, no flying in Classic, and you may have heard that it's quite a feat to be able to afford it at the appropriate yep. level, yep. and it's absolutely yep. true. Not taking any discounts into consideration yep. between the mount and training, 60% cost of gold total, and 100% cost a thousand, which is a small fortune in Classic. You can get 10% off by reaching Honored with the appropriate faction, and another 10% from reaching rank 3 in PvP, which is quite easy. Mm -hmm. Unless you're using the auction house, the level 40 training is very tight, usually requiring you to go yep. out of your way to farm some gold and maybe level up your profession. I'm just gonna need roll on For everything and vendor server, people's it's here. It's a bit more tricky because, like I simple. mentioned, no one really has any just gold like to spend at that point. You can pull it off, I'm sure, but it's just gonna take a bit more effort. I always say that fishing is low key the best profession for gold while leveling. There are low level fish yep. that are super valuable that high levels will be too lazy to farm. And it's always worth it if you sign Oily Blackmouth School to go fish it up. These are used for free action potions, which is one of the best potions in the game, even at max level. Yep. The Deviate Fish is they were used good for even the at Deviate Delight, which Didn't is one of the few them. appearance altering items back then. Also super valuable. All this is to say though, if you start saving early and watching your spell training yep. and getting your professions locked down from launch, you'll be in a much better position for affording you your mounts. You just go in there with a the plan. Training. That's what matters. And some more miscellaneous tips here, or if you plan on going hardcore in the launch, is to go for the title charm. In the Arathi oh. Highland Zone, located in the waters right oh. here, is the NPC Prince Nazjack. Don't go for that tr and dead trinket, you're gonna get called banned. Title charm, which stuns a target for three seconds. Yep. Due to the shortage of trinkets in general in Classic, this is insanely good, particularly for PvP, and it's something that's gonna be insanely camped even at the max level. Yep. So, if you plan on no-lifing it, and you're one of the first to reach level 41-ish, definitely check this out to see if you spawned. And in the same vein, if you're a hunter, you're gonna want to tame Broken Tooth. Back in Classic, he does before fast. everything was homogenized, Hunter Pits had different he attack does speeds. So f it's like a 1.0 attack was speed. Is also insane in Classic. He's the fastest so one PvP, there is. The faster the pet, the better. Yep. Broken Tooth is one of two pets in the game to have an attack speed of 1.0. I think 1. the other 0. one is the Rake. The other being a bad in the Zulgur upgrade. Really? Okay, which wow. Which will unlock until phase 4. Okay. So, as soon as you hit Shit. level 37, you should check out his spawn locations, bat. which can be found right here in the Badlands, and see if you can get lucky, because this will be another thing that'll be super camped at level 60. Probably.
But let's step outside of the game for a moment, shall we? Into that scary place called the... It's a good idea to get mine and get more stamina? Yeah, sure, if you have a time machine to go forward into Mr. Pandaria whenever that actually was added into the game. Yeah, it would. Um, so, uh, real life tips. Real world. Okay. Ah, bur Yeah, so here's what you want to do. Is it Wrath of the Lich King? Oh, I don't even remember. But uh, either way, it wasn't in vanilla well. Uh, the point is that real world tips, you want to make sure that everybody that loves and cares about you knows that you're going to be ignoring them for at least one month. And the only time to ever interact with you is whenever they are bringing you food. That's it. All the other times, all the other stuff, you don't even worry about that. You just purely focus on getting the food. And no one brings me food? Yeah, that's what, yeah, changing the poop sock. Well, it's like, no, you can usually go and take a shit during flight paths. That's usually what I would do, at least. Burns. Ah, oh, man. Well, the gameplay sucks. Yep. I guess the graphics are all right. Uh oh, girls. Never mind. Let's get back inside. Yep. I didn't sign up for mythic mode. <laughs> Let's regroup and study up on other brave souls who've laid okay, the path dude. before us. What you're watching is archived video footage from yep. the original release of the game, November 23rd, 2004. Look at him, dude. He's ready to go so to work. This surely has some useful information in He's it. He's playing on a laptop this with Windows This is the X. World of Warcraft at 1045. We're still installing it. Oh, boy. We plan on playing for at least 12 to 13 hours. We're going to document it. 12 to 13 hours? There it is, What is man. this amateur bullcorn? There so, it is. Now, Let's go through the unit. What? More than 12 to 13 hours. Good call. That only put us at 11 to 5. Okay, that's <laughs> oh, what I like look to at that. Getting serious now. He's ready. And hey, look. They even picked up the collector's edition, so you gotta give them some respect. Yep. And, of course, they've come prepared. So Could that bag be for Doritos for uh, 7-Eleven. special event? <laughs> yeah. Ark, show us. That's great, dude. <laughs> yeah. Some fucking Pepsi's, that's what I like dude. To see. Okay, as oh, far as food man. is concerned, your first tip is to get the most unhealthy stuff imaginable. Yep. Dr. Pepper, yep. Doritos, Hot Pockets. Yep. This is fuel for true gamers. Yep. The trick is to deny your body of real food. The combination of constantly being on the brink of death and the nonstop diarrhea will prevent you from sleeping. That's this allowing you more time to get those precious levels. Very good point. Uh, what level are you, Don? Four. Very good point. Five. Uh, Silk, it's uh, 340. What's your status? Angry. <laughs> Why is that? The leg. And I can't get food. I can't see my body. Angry. Some things never change, right? 2004. The game's fucked. 2019? Still fucked. Because it keeps getting Same booted. problems, too. Well, then it's definitely the original release. Yeah, this is but a real note, thing. No matter how pissed you get, you never stop playing. That's Just right. Just pound another chocolate pudding cup and get back in there. Yep. And speaking of which, though, let's talk a bit more about your food of choice. We're up to a good start here. Dr. Pepper... Love that DP, Oof. Doritos, I love DP chocolate too. pudding, but your feces is still a bit too solid at this point. Yep. Just to be sure, let's throw in some gummy bears, some nachos, and of course the go-to staple, Taco Top Bell. Of course, having your mom order and deliver it to you. Yep. We don't want any social interaction. Yep, now, do there we? it is. Diapers are I also knew going it. to be crucial. Just because you have to go to the I bathroom a lot doesn't mean you should be away from your computer. However, if you want a more long-term investment to save yourself some cash, you may want to look into something like this. Oh, like and this. as for your entertainment of choice, you have many options. You always have the sweet comfort of twitch.tv forward slash mad season show to guide you along in your journey. True. I even completed my initiation and I'm participating in the cat throwing Olympics, the sport of choice for any Twitch streamer. <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> Holy the shit. Classic isn't far now. Got him. I hope that you're leaving this video a bit more prepared and you're ready for the world of Warcraft. Okay, dude. I'm fucking ready, man. Dude, I'm fucking ready. 20 days. Farewell for now. Mark. Out of all people, we hope you enjoy. I expected yeah. to uh, throw shots. I never expected him, man. No, not even remotely. Oh my god. Uh, Legend. Yep. Dare. 
Holy shit, watch the classic trailer? I've watched that so many fucking times, dude. Like, accommodation of constantly being on the brink of death and constant diarrhea. Funniest description of, of us vanilla WoW players ever. I would prefer class identity over class balance for MMO. True. How many diapers do I have to buy? Let's step out of the game and get into real life unsubbed to prepare. This is the thing, right? Is that I've actually, I've been preparing for this for a long time, right? You should watch a video called WoW Account Hacked Destroyed My Life. An Addicted Gamer's Sad Tale. Okay. Sure. Why not?